This week, the LaRouche Political Action Committee has continued to keep the pressure on impeachment as the indispensable step in avoiding thermonuclear war. Mr. LaRouche himself was again featured on international media throughout the week. A discussion on press TV, which revolved around the crisis in Ukraine, gave Mr. LaRouche the last word. Yeah, we've left out one big factor here in the whole strategic picture. It goes together with the transatlantic community's financial state. The United States' Wall Street interests are hopelessly bankrupt. They're about to be plunged into bankruptcy. The British interests themselves who participate in the same thing as Wall Street, in fact, Wall Street and this British group are the same thing. They're an international group, the so-called British Anglo-American group, and they, that's called Wall Street. Now, Wall Street has taken over and destroyed the United States pretty much during the past two presidencies, those of Bush and now of Obama. So the, the crisis in the United States is several fold. It's the misery enfolded on, imposed on the people, which is insufferable. It also is the fact that Wall Street is about to go bankrupt because it has gone into a bail-in mode, as has the British system. Now, a bail-in mode is like an elevator on the 70th floor going down without a cable on it to the bottom floor and probably below the bottom floor. And therefore, we're in a momentary crisis which is caused by this international financial crisis which hits hardest in the transatlantic community. And one of the ways of dealing with this is to try to go to war. And the, the trigger of war is, is draw, driven now by the breakdown crisis of the entire British and U.S. economies who are in a bail-in collapse. That is the entire inflation of, ba of, of bailout which has gone on since the Bush family came into the presidency again, which actually Dick Cheney, not Bush. Bush was just a stooge. Dick Cheney was the real president. And so the, the, the Cheney president had started all this stuff. The 9-11 question is a key part of this, and that's about to explode. That is 9-11, the Americans were killed by Saudi and British instit instituted people. I know that. And this thing is exploding together with this issue of, of uh, the Obama's policies now. But the key thing here is that system is bankrupt. It's in a bail-in system. As I said, it's like an elevator on the 70th floor going down below the lowest floor, the subfloor. And when that happens, the entire system goes into a bankruptcy crisis. Very much like what happened to poor Germany in the, in the aftermath of World War I. Mr. LaRouche is saying what others are afraid to say and what needs to be said. We are quickly headed into a thermonuclear war. If you are unwilling to look that in the face, then you are unable to prevent it. On Wednesday, LaRouche PAC launched a midweek broadside, Jacuse, a wraparound spread in the print edition of the Washington Times, a paper which is delivered to the offices of the United States Congress, in addition to electronic ads, a banner on the streets of Washington, D.C., audio and video media, with one clear message, impeach Barack Obama for cause now. It cannot be emphasized enough how critical it is to remove him from any operational authority in order to avert war. This is not a Ukraine crisis, nor the United States versus Russia, though that's the current form the crisis takes. But do not confuse the form with the intent. The intent is to have war. The intent is the policy of empire, the reduction of the population of the world by at least 6 billion people. On the same day LaRouche Pack's presence dominated Capitol Hill on Wednesday, Obama was hit on another flank by members of the U.S. Congress. Representatives Walter Jones, Stephen Lynch, and Thomas Massey, joined by survivors and family members of the victims of the September 11th attacks, held a press conference, putting pressure on the president to release the redacted 28 pages, which detailed the foreign sponsorship of the 9-11 attacks. This is about the future security of this country, not only about the past, it's about the future security. These people that committed 9-11, they're still out there, they're still supporting 
and sponsoring terrorism, and they have not been held accountable. The release of the 28 pages will hold them accountable. It will bring them out of the shadows. We will know who they are, which will help us to prevent them from continuing to sponsor terrorism, to prevent them from any future attacks on this country. So other uh, people will not lose their loved ones in this way. So it's very important that those 28 pages be released. So uh, also I want to talk about the experience of sitting down and reading these 28 pages. Uh, it's in a room where it's soundproof and you're escorted in there and you're escorted out and there are no notes. Uh, but this is something that's sort of shocking when you read it. As I read it, and we all had our own experience, I had to stop every couple pages and just sort of absorb and try to rearrange my understanding of history for the past uh, 13 years and the years leading up to that. It, it challenges you to rethink everything. And so uh, I think the whole country needs to go through that. It's going to be difficult and it could be embarrassing. But that is no reason to keep the truth from the American people. I will leave you with one final thought. On 9-11, thankfully, you were very lucky. Only by the courageous actions of a few passengers on the doomed airline flight 93 were your lives spared. You were the targets intended to be killed next. And if that occurred, it would be your family member here today insisting that the truth be told. Thank you. As Mr. LaRouche has emphasized, the Bush-Obama cover-up of the Saudi role in 9-11 is the same thing as the current cover-up the White House is in a war over with the Senate, a war which also broke to the surface on Wednesday morning. And that finally, after a decade, members of the House and Senate realize in part that 9-11 and the subsequent cover-up operations continued under the Obama administration today has put the United States on a fast track towards world war. This question comes in from a Washington, D.C.-based source, uh, an institutional figure, um, who asks the following. Mr. LaRouche, as you know, this week, Senator Dianne Feinstein accused the executive branch of constitutional violations in spying on the activities of the Senate Select Committee on Intelligence, which she chairs. These strong public rebukes of the Obama administration by a leading Democratic senator come at a time when the president continues to flaunt his unitary executive power grab, with Obama ruling increasingly by executive orders that usurp the power of Congress under our Constitution. The constitutional balance of power has been overturned by this presidency. What is to be done? Well, uh, some things I won't say, not because they're secret, but they're, it's discretionary. Because we're at a point where the a committee of the Senate, the has act, uh, leading members of the Senate, have acted to rebuke the President of the United States, in fact, for crimes he has committed, which that President has committed, which, and implicitly, the way to understand this, why this change of heart on these leading members of the Senate, why did they go after Obama on an issue which they could have gone after him three years ago, easily? Because Obama is on the edge of launching some nuclear war. And his policies, his efforts in terms of the fraud that he committed in what he did in, in claiming that a, a Nazi organization, a Nazi organization was the new president of Ukraine, a, new, a Nazi, a known Nazi presidency, with three members of the so-called cabinet of this Nazi surrogate, who are all directly tied to crimes, Nazi crimes. Whereas the real, uh, the real president of Ukraine is in suspension while his, his, what the disposition is going to be. So the, act, the only actual president of Ukraine is one sitting in suspension 
waiting a pro due process of some sort to decide what's going to be done. Whereas a liar, who is a liar because he knows what he did, the President of the United States lied with the help of a, a Dick Cheney accomplice in getting a committee in the Congress to lie. And that was the basis on which they say that Obama had secured a new presidency of a bunch of Nazis, a Nazi factor, a known Nazi factor, known to Ukrainians as being a Nazi factor, known to Poles as being a, and so forth. So the President of the United States is a liar. He's a liar on an issue which he brings to the point of warfare, not local warfare. There could be no war in, in terms of Russia it will not be involved in a war over Ukraine. If a war comes, Russia will not give in on the ultimatum. So the President of the United States, who's not shouldn't be a President of the United States, and in fact who's violated, who should be thrown out of office for crimes, is the most impeachable president probably ever. Um, so this week, the, point, the members of Congress have returned the to their districts, and many of them are beginning the election campaign. It is in your hands to continue to create the dynamic by which Obama is forced out of power. Join this fight.